Howard will come and pray for the humbling ourselves. And I'm going to ask everybody if they would just follow suit. Thank you. May we bow. Gracious Father in heaven, we come now, Lord, thanking you for this afternoon, thanking you, God, that we are able to come now and even hear the words from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And Lord, we know that we are to humble ourselves and we are to do it beginning today like we should have been doing all these days before and the days that are to come. And Lord, we all should want to humble ourselves and pray for the humility of our leaders. I thank you, Lord, that we're able to pray and, we, and thank you, Lord, that, that you hear from heaven. And I know that you will continue to hear from heaven as long as we are in your will. So, Father, I pray also that we will seek God's face. Lord, we need to seek you, seek your face, and, and need, ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we definitely need your direction in all that we do. Help us to turn from our wicked ways. Help us to repent and ask you to heal this church. And I know, God, if this happens and we let things happen the way you have you have willed it to be so, that it will happen in your name. This I pray in Jesus' name, and I pray that we will humble ourselves, that we'll be obedient, and that we will follow your will. Let you lead our way. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And we bless your name, dear God, as we come before your presence, we seek your face. For we realize, God, we can't move. We can't breathe without you. And you said that if we would seek to do your will, that you would by no wise turn us away. So, God, we're looking for direction. We know, God, the way that you point us is the way that we ought to go. And as we go in that direction, Lord, we ask that you would pave the way for us. God, we seek your face as it relates to our duties as servants of the Most High God. God, we seek your face as it relates to those who are going through ailments in their bodies. We seek your face as religious leaders in a world that is at war and COVID on every hand. We're seeking your face because we believe, God, when we get an answer from you, that we can make it. We thank you now for hearing our voices, hearing our prayers, hearing our cries as we seek to do your will. Let your will be done in our lives. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. We know, Lord, that your word tells us clearly that you will indeed forgive our sins. For it says clearly, and I will forgive their sin. We know that you're faithful, God, and we know that you will do exactly what you said that you would do. We come now, Lord, knowing that we need to seek your forgiveness. But in order for you to forgive us, Lord, we also know that we must repent of our sins. So we come right now, Lord, trusting you and trusting in your everlasting grace to redeem us and to guide us in the right way. Thank you for your goodness to us, Father God. For we know that when you forgive, you in no way change the past, but you surely do change the future. So forgive us now, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to pray for the healing of the land. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, our Father, we come before your presence acknowledging that the world is all messed up. And no matter what we do, do we do not know and cannot fix it ourselves. 
We need a higher power, oh God. We need one with more wisdom and understanding. It knows how to get to the hearts and minds of people. That you may change our ways, O oh God. That we may treat one another as you have called us to treat one another. We realize, O oh God, that whereas COVID has been with us for about three years now, there have been other issues that have been wrecking this land. We find injustices, O oh God, all over the world. So many people are seeking to take advantage of one another. And God, we pray that there will be fairness and equity. And as Amos would say, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Oh God, we pray that you will move upon this world, oh God, every leader, all of the believers, oh God, and, and that we would change our ways and that we would seek your face, oh God, so you can forgive our sins and heal our land. Oh God, we're calling upon you right now. Step in, oh God, bring healing to the to our bodies, oh God, bring peace in, in, uh, in situation, oh God, uh, where there's a lot of bitterness and anger. Oh God, only you can do this. And so now we look unto the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that all of our help comes from you and you alone. It's in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus the Christ we offer this prayer. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. Uh, we did what we were supposed to do. We just got finished early. But we ask that you will continue to be in prayer as the ministers and lay association uh, will come before you uh, pretty soon and uh, take the program from here. May God bless you. Thank you for being in here a part of this, uh, this prayer. God bless you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise Thank the Lord, everybody. Can we give God praise for he's wonderful? Come on, come on, don't fool me. Can we give God praise? For he is an awesome God. Can I get a little bit more of these monitors? Can I get a little bit more of these monitors? We just want the glory of the Lord to rise among us in even now. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you glory, God. We give you glory. The glory of the Lord is among us. 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 Oh! 
I search high and low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody great, nobody great, nobody greater than you, yeah. Come on, I searched all over. I searched all over. I couldn't find no nobody. I searched high and low. High and low. Still couldn't find no nobody. Just as nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. Can we just call that all over the place? Come on, I searched all over. Searched all over. Search high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Help me say, I search all over, search all over, could find, find nobody. nobody. Hey, search high and low, search high and low, still couldn't find, still couldn't find nobody. Come on, come on. Don't fool me now. If you came to give God glory, go ahead. 
glory. I, I, I just I just had a flashback about how God made a way for me. I'm sorry, you got to excuse me because I've been through too much. I've been through too much hell and high water not to worship him. And is there anybody in here that just don't mind giving God praise right now? you got to be like david i was glad when they said unto me that's why i don't understand how people can come to the worship with frowns on their faces because the songwriter said glad to be in the service I'm, i wish i had a, i'm from leland north carolina i'm glad to be in the service just one more time Somebody shout it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, give him some glory. Come on, give him the glory. You owe him this one. Don't get too cute and so sophisticated that you forgot where you came from. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you and I will trust in you yeah I will trust in you yeah said the Lord said whom shall I feel that scripture right there the whom shall I be? I will wait. I will wait. I will wait on you. And I will trust the Lord. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on. The Lord is mine. The Lord is my light and sound. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? The Lord. Yeah. Whom shall I be? I will wait. I will wait on you. Come on. Anybody don't mind waiting on the Lord. I will wait on you. Here's what you do when you're waiting. I will trust in you. You've got to learn how to trust him in your waiting season. Oh. Hey. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Help me say. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on. I will remain confident. I will remain confident in this. I will see the Come on, I'll be with me. I will be with me. I will 
will be your strength, your God. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Help me say, oh, we set our hope. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your We set our hope on your who is the everlasting God? You are, you are the everlasting God. God. Oh, we everlasting set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Oh, you are the everlasting God. God, oh, we said I hope on you. We said I hope on you. We said I hope on your love. We said I hope on your one. Who is the everlasting God? You are the everlasting God. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. No matter what you do, just remain confident in this. You will see the goodness of the Lord. Help me say, in this, I will see. No deals in everybody say Come on, open up your mouth and say I will remain I will remain I will see the goodness Say it one more time I will remain Yes, I will Yeah I will see the goodness of the Lord. Now open up your mouth that you receive him. Come on, lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Come on, receive what God has in store for you. Your breakthrough is in the room. Your deliverance is in the room. All you've got to do is position yourself to get everything God has for you. There is no good thing he's withholding from you. Hallelujah. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you you reign on the throne for you are god and god alone because of you my cloudy days they are gone and I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Yeah. Help me say, I, I live my hands in Can we just worship him right there? Can we just all agree on the fact he reigns? For he is God. Because of you, my cloudy days, I can sing to you this song. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go ahead and take it out right here. You know it. I love you 
Jesus. There it is. And I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, help me say, oh, oh, oh I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I love you, Lord, I Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. That's love. That's love. Come on, help me say, Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me. Oh, God. 
God's love, that's love. That's love. Anybody been a recipient of God's love? So, Lord, I love you more than anything. Can we just all declare all with the bill and say, I love you? Oh, I love you more than anything. Yeah, say it one more time. Lord, I love you. I love you more than anything. Now, come on and open up your mouth right there. That's a good worship moment right there. When you push past how you feel, when you push past how the things going on in your life, and you declare, God, I love you more than I love my title, more than I, I worship my problem. Come on, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, let's worship him. For he is the true living God. God, we thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. For you're worthy of the praise. God, we love you. We adore you, Father. Come on, let's push into his presence even right now. Let's make worship come easy. I know we had to travel to get here. But while we're here, let's go ahead and give honor where honor is due. Let's give praise where praise is due. Come on, where are the real worshipers at in the building? That testify, I don't care what who's here and who's not here, as long as God is in the building. Hallelujah. I'm waiting on somebody. I'm waiting on somebody. I'm waiting on somebody. I, I don't know who it is, but I'm waiting on somebody. God bless you this week. You hadn't praised them. I'm waiting on somebody. God healed your body this week, but you hadn't praised them. I'm waiting on somebody in this room. God made a way out of no way, and you have not given him praise yet. I'm waiting on somebody in this room because he woke you up this morning and told you in your right mind. I don't know who I'm waiting on, but somebody, oh God, a praise uh, because he brought you from the highway to the byway. Somebody, oh God, a praise because God made a way out of no way. Somebody, oh God, a praise. I don't know who you are, but the Bible said that everything that has left, praise the name of the Lord. Everybody inhaling, everybody exhaling, and if you got breath, you ought to be praising the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Won't God do it? Oh, I don't know who I'm waiting on. I don't know who I'm waiting on. I don't know who it is. There's somebody in here. Oh, God, a praise. Yeah. We're standing, we're standing all over the building. Oh. We're standing all over the building. It'll, it'll get to you at some point in time. It'll, it'll catch up with you at some point in time. Because when I think about what the Lord has done for me, my soul cries out. When you think you ought to think. Amen, amen. Call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods for his steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords for his steadfast love endures forever. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's thank God for the praise team. Amen. I, I, I know y'all want to go on. Y'all just want to tear Los Angeles up. We will follow our program as outlined because I don't want to get into any trouble. Scripture shall be read by Lily Davis. She told me to call her Lily. And Reverend Celestra Arai will lead us in prayer if she's here in that order. Zion family. The scripture I will be reading for your hearing today is Psalms 24 as written in the King James Version. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, yes, yes. O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king... And the king and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong almighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. And lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. God's word for God's people.
Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my father's throne. Hallelujah. Makes all my wants and my wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempted snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Oh, wise and eternal God, Lord, we thank you for this day, oh God. This is the day that you have made and we have chosen to rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. God, we're glad because we have a relationship with you, oh God, that allows us, oh God, to be uh, have courage and be courageous, oh God, as we face this day and all that it has to offer. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you, God, for your forgiving grace and your mercy, oh God. We just thank you because you are our Father who art in heaven, the one who sits high and looks low. God, we thank you because you are our healer and our deliverer, oh God. We give you praise this afternoon, oh God, because you have brought us this far by faith. Through the dangerous highways and byways, through the skyways, oh God, you have kept us for such a time as this. And so be with us now in this worship experience. Bless those who will have an ear to hear, O oh God, that we might know what is thy good and perfect will concerning us. God, we thank you for the speaker of the hour, that you would bless him greatly, God, that you would uh, anoint him afresh, O oh God, with the spirit, O oh God, of authority, that he will speak a word that will bring new life. God, we thank you for all things come of thee, and we bless you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Hear our prayer and hear our plea. Amen, amen, amen. Let the church say amen. For several years that we've been together, and we're still in the land of the living. Since we've not been together in many years, I think we ought to take a moment. The Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now. Lord is blessing me all right now. All right. If you think, well, come on. He walks me this morning.
not been together in years. And I don't know how long ago you all were shaking hands and hugging and all that. But if you're here, if you just stand all over this house and keep turning to somebody and just wave at them today, because God kept us alive. Even through COVID, many dangers tore us and snares. And he's allowed us to be together one more time in the land of the living. And we bless his name because he's worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. We thank him today for his goodness and for his mercy. And you want to tell your neighbor, neighbor, you want to give him praise. Ministers and Lay Association annual meeting. And when the roll is called in a couple of days, we will learn of persons who have gone on to be with the Lord. And God has kept us here. We don't deserve to be here. Not because we've been good, but because of his grace and because of his mercy. I said it's because of his grace and his mercy. Dr. Mitchell, it's because of his grace and his mercy. Highest praises to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To the immediate past president of the International Ministers of the Lay Association, Reverend Dr. Kevin McGill. Past president, Reverend Dr. Curtis Walker all of the executive team members of Ministers and Lay Association, whom I am thankful to work with, who have a plethora of talent. And I'm grateful to be a part of that team. To our general officers, to connectional officers, to president of our of Christian education and president of Connectional Lay Council, Say to all of you who are presiding elders, ministers, to the laity of our church, the sons and daughters of Barry, to our presiding officer today, to this audacious praise team. And to these very, very talented musicians. One thing I like about International Business Lay Association, we don't quench the spirit. That's right. We let the spirit do what the spirit is going to do anyway. And to all who have participated, I, the next time I want a scripture read, my God. And a prayer prayed. Amen. Amen. It's good to be here. Sister McCoy is in the back. Good to see you, Mother. Amen. And, uh, and uh, our past officers, general officers, Sister Gatson, and any others who are in this house. It is because God has ordained this moment that we are gathered here. I want to thank our chaplain because. I said to him, I guess about six months ago, I got a preacher, brother, that the Lord has laid on my heart, and whom did 
the association needs to hear from. I was I was headed to a, a church to visit and preach one Sunday morning, and I went through Rockingham. And, uh, <laughs> that, that's a new Zion church. That's a new Zion church. And I stopped off at the church, stopped by the church, and there was a, a lady and a man walking, getting ready to walk to the church. I said, uh, I knew who the pastor was. I said, who is the pastor? They told me. I said, can he preach? They said, oh, can he preach? I said, is he, is he a good man? He, oh, he's a good man. And they said, um, you're, not, you're not replacing him, Mark. I said, oh, no, no. Yet the pastor of this church, Reverend Lloyd Nivens IV, is a tremendous brother. Amen. He's done all that stuff that we're supposed to do, that we said we're said to do, matriculation through Livingstone Hood, and now at United. Um, he's done all of that. And God called him to preach as a teenager. And God has blessed him last several years, and he is proud to be the pastor of the Mount Pisgah AME Zion Church in Rockingham, North Carolina. So Dr. McGill, I said to him, I said, let me talk to the chaplain, let me talk to the chaplain. I said, you get a sermon ready, because God has talent in our church, and I'm grateful that this organization allows talent And they will sing a selection now, and then during our offering, we'll have them back up. Amen. You don't come this far to sing one or two songs. You might have to sing three or whatever. And so, so we're happy. So after the praise team will come, the, the next, our preacher will be the Reverend Lord Nivens IV, the proud pastor of the Mount Pisgah AME Zion Church, Rockingham, North Carolina. Let the church say amen. Try and true. Try and true. 
sanctuary is that anybody's prayer on this afternoon Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true and Lord if you do that with thanksgiving not grudgingly but with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary Lord for you giving honor and praise Proctor, the president of the Board of Bishops, Bishop Monroe, the senior bishop, to my bishop, Bishop Daryl Brewster Starr, senior, to our host bishop, Bishop Brian Thompson, senior, to the entire Board of Bishops, to the WHOMS Executive Board, to the general and connectional officers past and present, to the president of the International Ministers and Lay Association, the Reverend Dr. Anthony Witherspoon, to all presiding elders, pastors, ministers, and laity, and to the saints and the angels, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I must say that it is good to be here, and to my family, y'all wave at me. It's good to have family to come along with me. Amen. Our scripture for this afternoon can be found in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, and we're going to focus on two verses, verses 22 and 23 from the New International Standard Version of the Bible. Again, that is Acts 26, verses 22 and 23, and it reads, but God has helped me to this very day. So I stand here and testify to small and great alike, saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer, and as the first to rise from the dead, would bring the message of light to his people and to the Gentiles. Just for a few moments on this afternoon, I want to preach from this subject with the help of the Holy Spirit, the light of a new day. All right, all right. Light of a new day. Let us pray to God. We thank you 
for this day, God. We thank you for this hour. God, it is preaching time. Let the people not see Lloyd, but let them see the Lord. And Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Christ, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? And why should my Hold me lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a constant friend is he is on the sparrow and I know he watches me and I sing I sing because I'm happy I sing sing because I'm free is I uh, is on the sparrow and I know no matter where I may be I know he watches me. The light of a new day. Light is defined as something that makes vision possible. Therefore, in essence, for one to possess vision, there must be the evidence of light. However, the clarity or cloudiness of one's vision will be impacted by the type of light that is present. For example, incandescent lights are powered by a filament that once it makes contact with electricity, it will then emit light. However, this type of light bulb has the tendency to run hot after long periods of use. You have fluorescent lights, which are gas charge lights, usually found in glass tubes. However, the gas and other contents can only admit light when there is a chemical reaction or a disturbance that produces UV lights. So in essence, no disturbance, no light. And then you have what we are all moving to now as we aim to save money on our energy bills uh, which is LED lights uh, which are made up of diodes and electrons however this light can only be produced uh, when the diodes are excited uh, to the point where they produce uh, a directional light Uh, in other words no excitement uh, no light Uh, For those in here today that are only seeking spiritual vision, those lights will suffice for you. But for those of us in here today that can say that that earthly vision is not enough, but we need spiritual vision, those lights will be of no use. For the light that is needed for spiritual vision cannot be contained in a tube. The light that's needed for spiritual vision cannot be bought at a store. The light that's needed for spiritual vision doesn't need excitement or disturbance to shine. But the light that gives us spiritual vision is the light of a new day. And that 
new day uh, represents a dying to sin uh, to be born to Christ uh, through salvation. Uh, too many times uh, we have traded uh, the light of a new day uh, for redundant ineffective programming uh, that has only produced a cliche religion uh, with no real soul transformative power. Uh, therefore, uh, moving our churches uh, from vibrant movements uh, to visionless monuments uh, from hospitals for the sick uh, to museums for artifacts uh, and if the truth be told uh, a lot of us in here today uh, if we were honest with ourselves uh, can admit that instead of running on fuel uh, we're running on fumes uh, and it's only the light of a new day uh, that can enable the church uh, and the people of God uh, to get to the place uh, where God desires for us to be and is there anybody up in the building on this afternoon that can testify I want the light of a new day this old light this temporary light this earthly light won't do me no good I've been through too many dark situations in my life to depend on an earthly light because if I depend on an earthly light that means that it has the capability to go out after it's woe out but if I depend on an eternal light that even when I feel like I can't go on even when I feel like all hope is a loss I can do as David said I can look to the hills from which cometh my help knowing that all of my help comes from the Lord in order for us to truly experience the light of a new day there are three things that we must do or look at and or examine. The first thing that we must do is we must accept that all of us have a yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, yesterday in this sense does not only apply to the day before today, but it also applies to the past. And all of us have a past. I don't care how sanctified, holy, or educated you may find yourselves on this afternoon. You have a past. We may not know your past, but you have a past. And so the first thing we must do is we must accept the yesterday. Paul here in the text is before King Agrippa pleading his case before the king. In his words, we see Paul acknowledges uh, that he has a past here in Acts chapter 26 uh, verse number 9 Paul says indeed uh, I myself thought that I must do many things uh, contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth uh, this I also did in Jerusalem uh, and many of the saints I shut up in prison uh, having received authority uh, from the chief priests and when they were put to death uh, I cast my vote against them and I punish them often in every synagogue and compel them to blasphemy and being exceedingly enraged against them Paul says I persecuted them even in foreign cities Paul here understands that in order to live in a new light you must first acknowledge that you've had your days in darkness I don't know about you but I've had some dark moments in my life I don't know about you you but I've had some clouded moments in my life I don't know about you but I thank God on this afternoon that God did not leave me in my dark moments I thank God on this afternoon that God did not leave me in the dark place I thank God on this afternoon that God did not leave me in the valley of the shadow I thank God on this afternoon that God did not leave me in the dark place place and I know that Paul is not the only one in the building that has done wrong but thought that they were doing right I know that Paul is not the only one in the building that has done things that have been contrary to the will of God 
Paul comes to the realization that all of us have a yesterday. Yesterday, we told a lie. Yesterday, we held unforgiveness in our hearts. Yesterday, we said or did something that intentionally hurt someone's feelings. Yesterday, we went left when God told us to go right. Yesterday, we ignored the voice of God speaking to us. Yesterday, we all said and felt short of the glory of God. And when we get ready to walk into the light of a new day, we've got to walk with the boldness, declaring that yes, I have a yesterday, but my yesterday does not define who I can be today. And is there anybody in the building that can testify that you are not defined by your yesterday? Because if you were defined by your yesterday, you wouldn't be here in Los Angeles, California, in the Hyatt Regency, in the Church of the Living God, if you were truly defined by your yesterday. But somebody prayed for you. Somebody interceded for you. And they call on the name of the Lord when you couldn't call on them for yourself. And so secondly, if if we're going to experience the light of a new day, we must acknowledge the process. Paul says to King Agrippa here, in verse 12, he says, and on one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and the commission of the chief priests. And about noon, King Agrippa said, I was on the road and I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me. And me and my companions, we fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do thou persecute me? Is it hard for you to kick against the goat? Then I asked myself, who are you, Lord? And, and he replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. See, church, it was necessary uh, for Paul to go through Damascus uh, because the process uh, of Saul being changed to Paul uh, required him uh, to have an encounter uh, with God uh, on the road uh, to Damascus and I just park the car to and keep it running my Bible tells me that as Saul was blinded on the road to Damascus that the Lord appeared to Ananias and the Lord said there's Saul my servant Saul and I want you to anoint him so that he may receive his sight and Ananias did like good church folk do and Ananias Ananias said, Dear Lord, do you not know that this is the one who persecuted your people? Lord, did you not know that this is the one who was crucifying your children? And the Bible says that God replied unto Ananias and said, Ananias, I will show him how much he has to suffer for my name's sake. Church, we must understand that to everything there is a process church never allow the devil to make you feel like your process is not worth it church never allow the devil to make you think that there's not a product at the end of the process because without the process there'll be no production and you might be saying well reverend where did you get that from? Well, as I look at a potato, it had to go through a process to become a potato chip. As I look at a pound cake, it had to have flour, milk and eggs, room temperature butter, and vanilla flavoring to become a pound cake. As I look at the process, it takes green grass being eaten by a brown cow and somehow and some way 
it produces uh, white milk uh, and I just want to let you know uh, that while the process uh, may not be pretty uh, the process uh, is productive uh, the process uh, you may have to cry uh, but it is productive uh, the process uh, you may find yourself uh, with just you and Jesus uh, but it is productive uh, I heard the songwriter say uh, please uh, be patient with me uh, because God uh, is not through with me yet uh, but when when God gets through with me, I shall come out pure as gold. I was in my room on last night and Dr. Ross, the organist, came to the room and he talked about the importance of drinking water. And he said, Lloyd, do you like to drink water? I said, no, Doc. It doesn't taste good. I can't find the right flavor to meet my taste buds. And Dr. Ross said something that was so prophetic, presiding at the heart. He said, Lord, don't worry about the flavor. Just be concerned with the purpose. And I just stopped by Zion on my way to glory to encourage somebody. Don't worry about the flavor of your process. Just know that your process has, your process has purpose. So Paul, let's agree and know that because God has taken him through a process, that he was able to be rescued from his own people and from the people who once persecuted him. God says to Paul, I am sending you to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among all those who are sanctified by faith in me. See church, your process is not designed only to benefit you. So stop thinking that your process and your pain is all about you. See, see, I, I've grown to understand that your process not only is for you, but your process is to be a testament and a testimony to those that are connected to you. And see, if you never go through a test, then you won't have a testimony. And if you never have a testimony, then your life will not be a testament because testament is the past tense of testimony. But you can't have need either if you do not have a test when you are blessed it's to help those that are connected to you to acknowledge their own blessings in their own lives when you are delivered it is to help those that are connected to you to believe in the delivering power of God when you are healed it is to help those that are connected to you to believe that if God oh I, I'm if God healed you that he's more than able to you know in Hamlet we say if God can do it for me that he surely enough can do it for you because the same God that blessed me is the same God that can bless you so your process is purposeful therefore we must acknowledge that all of us are going through a process if we're going to shed this light of a new day, we've got to let people know we're going through a process. Yeah. We ain't perfect. That's right. Amen. We may look like we got it all together. Yeah. But honey, you just don't know what work it took. Okay, don't know. Okay, let, me, let me get back here. Let me get let me get back. Let me get let me get let me. My, my country roots came out. Let me let me get. You don't know what it takes to look this good. It took a lot to look this good. I, I, had, I, had, I had to shed some tears to look this good. I, I had to have some forgiveness in my heart. To, you don't know what it took. That's right. Say it. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so we must share our process yeah. so that others yes, will be set free That's right. by our testimony. Yeah. Paul's desire even in chains. <laughs> 
was to set people free. What is your desire? Is your desire just to tell your testimony just to get a pat on the back? Is your desire just to tell it, just to be telling it? Or to test a lie instead of testifying? If you truly told your testimony, you know, I just believe if the church really began to testify, souls would be saved. Okay. I, I really do believe that the church really, if we really testified about how God brought us over, we would be delivered. See, we used to sing songs that carried our testimony. We used to have responsible reading that carried our testimony. Therefore, our worship was consumed with people testifying in different ways. But finally, if we're going to experience the light of a new day, My God. then we must make the most of today. Yeah. Paul says to King Agrippa, so then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven. First to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and all in Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their deeds. That's why some of the Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God, somebody say, but God. But God has helped me to this very day. And so I stand here to testify to small and great. I'm saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer and as the first to rise from the dead would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. Paul knew that the light of a new day was found in making the most of the day that he was presently in. Even in chains, Paul was still free and through his freeness in his earthly chains, he was able to declare and decree the gospel of Jesus Christ so that others who might find themselves bound physically could be free spiritually for when we make the most of today when we're obedient to the voice of God and through our obedience God uses the unusable to do the unthinkable and to reach the unreachable so on today whatever you do for the Lord you ought to make sure that you do it to the best of your ability if you sing you ought to sing in harmony if you preach you ought to preach in humility if you usher you ought to usher gladly if you serve you ought to serve faithfully if you count money you ought to count with integrity and if you praise you ought to praise wholeheartedly for it's in the light of a new day that God is not looking for the perfect but he's looking for the available it's in the light of a new day where God is not bound by an order of worship but God is seeking that we come to worship it's in the light of a new day that God is not focused on your payroll but God is wanting to be the Lord over over your soul it's in the light of a new day that God is not focused on building memberships but God is focused on making disciples it's in the light of a new day that God is not concerned with the color for your rainbow tea but God is desiring his children to be set free for it's in the light of a new day that brings these lyrics huh, to my mind huh, from my favorite movie huh, the fight and temptations huh, the lyrics go something like this huh, it took me a while huh, but i'm finally here huh, I, I just wanna huh, testify huh, and make it crystal clear huh, see i've been picked out huh, to be picked on huh, to be talked about huh, out of huh, my friends are like, I've been beat down till he turned my life around. It seems like I'm always falling short of being worthy because I ain't good enough. But he still loves me. 
I ain't uh, no shining star. The bright lights uh, are not shining on me because I ain't, uh, I ain't good enough. But he still uh, loves me for it's the light of a new day where we acknowledge our past. It's the light of a new day where we acknowledge the process. But it's the light of a new day where we make the most of today. I hear the hymn writer say, Hark the herald, angels sing, Jesus, the light of the world, glory to the newborn king, Jesus, Jesus, the light of the world, so walk in the light, beauty for light, come where the two drops of mercy shine bright shine all around us by day and by night because Jesus is the light of the world I feel like preaching good God Almighty is there anybody here that can testify that you're ready to walk in the light of a new day if I was in Hamlet North Carolina I would close my sermon by singing this little light of mine I'm, I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it shine everywhere that I go I'm gonna let it I'm gonna let it shine I won't let Satan I won't let haters I won't let enemies I won't let naysayers blow it out but I I'm, I'm gonna let it shine is there anybody here that can say preacher you're not the only one I'm going to let my light shine somebody say somebody give God glory it's the light of a new day that'll cause the church to be unified it's the light of a new day that'll cause God to be glorified it's the light of a new day that'll cause ministry evangelism discipleship Christian education Sunday school to be maximized and when we walk in that light all we can say is to God 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 be the glory for the light Oh, a new day. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Light of a new day. What a powerful word. You put your hands together and thank God for the word that went forth today. Light of a new day. And as he preached that word, I, two words, a few words just kept coming to my mind as he preached that word. It was, this is the day. 
this is the day. And after hearing a powerful word like that, this is the day that you need to make your decision. We don't take it for granted that we'll be coming to these settings that everybody's saved. Because we know now a lot of folk don't have the church in them. They're just playing church. So we would be remiss if we did not open the doors of the church and extend an invitation for someone to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because I'm here to tell you one time, one day playing going to be all over. You can play singing. You can play preaching. You can play all of that. But one day you're going to have to be called to give proof of your call. So my brothers and sisters, as we stand all over the building, I extend invitation for you. And if you don't know Christ for the pardon of your sin, if you never confess with your mouth and believe with your lips, I want to extend invitation for you to come and give your life to Christ tonight. You may have come all the way from North Carolina, Alabama, New York. We don't worry about that. This is between you and the Lord. Maybe you just need a word of prayer tonight. Maybe you have some burden that you brought with you to Los Angeles. You want to lay them down. Come, we want to pray with you. Bring your burdens. We want to pray with you. Is there one today who will come? Pastor, I need prayer. I made it to LA, but I'm still need a blessing. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? The Bible says, "If you draw nigh unto Him, He'll draw nigh unto you." Are there any others who will come? I'm saved, but I just need to see the light of a new day. I need prayer. Will you come? Will you come tonight? I wish I had about ten folk who don't mind being real in this place today. Father God, here we are tonight. We come to be humble tonight before you, for God, we come saying we need you right now. God, we thank you for the powerful word that has went forth, for it has touched my heart. And so God, I don't come for form of fashion. I don't come that folk might just pat me on my back or just to be seen. But God, I come because I need a touch from you. Oh God, I pray, oh God, that if they're healing, heal right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, if it be delivered, deliver right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, if someone needs to be set free, set free right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I know you can do it. I come, oh God, to confess all of my sins before you. I come, oh God, to bring all that I have and all that I am before you. And God, I ask you to touch me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And God, I pray, oh God, that you would not only bless me, bless everybody sitting around me. Bless every hand I will touch today. Bless all my family, my children's children. And God, if you do that, I'll be ever so careful in all that I do to give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. about Zion and Reverend Nivens and there's a group that's coming on men and women who are serious about God and Zion and our church is in good hands amen thank you Lord for what you have done Our Board of Bishops have been invited to join us today around four or shortly thereafter. Um, one of the things that Dr. McGill did when he became president of the International Medicine Lay Association and so did Dr. Curtis Walker, even though we know we have our own association, we invite dialogue between those who lead our church from the highest office and the International Ministers and Lay Association. And they support us. And it gives us an opportunity to hear from them as they hear from us. Amen? There are some index cards that Pastor Bimbo has and those who might help him out to stand all who are. If you have a question that you want to ask the president of the Board of Bishops, please raise your hand and place your question. One, 
request John. One. Oh no. On the index card. Now, uh, we have some business to attend to. We can't promise that all questions will get answered, but at least we will turn those questions over to them uh, and ask that they will uh, address those questions because we want to be heard and they want us to be heard from them. Amen? Because we realize that although we are an organization, association, it takes the entire village to raise a child. So we expect them momentarily uh, in just a moment. I'm going to ask Dr. Maurice Harden if he would come at this time uh, to continue our worship. Amen. And once you have once you have placed your questions on the index card, please return them to uh, Pastor Bimbo and his group, whomever you have, right, uh, right here. Thank you. Amen. Haven't we been blessed today? Can we just put our hands together and celebrate what God has done in our midst? Come on, you can do better than that. God has blessed us on this afternoon. And listen, we want to keep that same energy and spirit as we prepare to give. Amen, somebody. Because we know God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Amen. And so as we continue to support the International Ministers and Lay Association, as we are here for our annual worship experience, uh, we're going to ask you to share with us an offering of $50. Amen, somebody. And so those who are writing checks, you can write your checks to I-M-L-A, amen. And we would be happy to receive that offering as we continue the work of this wonderful and mighty association of Zion, amen. We're going to ask my colleague, my friend, my brother, the Reverend Dr. David T. Miller uh, to come and give us directions as we give, amen. Uh, good to see you all. You all look good. You all look good. I don't know about you, but I'm always just excited that here it is. COVID has come and gone, still sneaks around every now and again. But it's good to see black folk come together. My heart is overjoyed to see my people. Amen. I want you to do me a favor before I give you some instruction. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I want you to know. I really missed you. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So as we pray our hearts and minds for the offering, I want you all to know we have some different options that you can give. Uh, you can give via cash, uh, that is an offering of $50, or you can write a check as it's been directed to IMLA. Um, I want us to write the checks uh, uh, to date, amen. Uh, I know some of us uh, want to write some post-dated checks, but if you can hold it down. Uh, I know what y'all saying, Dr. Miller, technically you're right. We're supposed to write the checks for the day, but blacknically, we're going to post-date it for about two weeks out. But please <laughs> write it for uh, uh, this day and time. Uh, you also can uh, give donations via Cash App, uh, dollar sign I-M-L-A-A-M-E Zion. As Cash App sign, dollar sign, I-M-L-A-A-M-E, Zion. Uh, Dr. Kent will be posting it up shortly. And you also can give via PayPal as well. Uh, you're all going to be giving that way as well. We thank you so much for your gifts. We thank you so much for your offering. Because you don't have to give, but you're giving anyhow. And it is truly a blessing to the association. And we appreciate all that you do. Uh, the choir, I think uh, uh, Dr. Witherspoon said the choir will be, will be running a selection for us, we have two tables set up here on the left and to my, your right, my left, uh, that you can come and process down and drop your offering on the table. We have some offering uh, uh, plates there as well. So thank you so much for your giving. Uh, let us look to God in prayer. Go ahead and put your offering in your, in your right hand. That is your covenant hand. Gracious God, and I say, Father, thank you, O Lord, for the offering we're about to receive for the upbuilding of your kingdom. I'm blessed, O God, everybody that gives. I know, O oh God, that we ask for $50, 
but as long as they give their best, that's all that matters to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is the dressing of the room down here, down here, down here. This is the dressing of the room down here. Oh, got to get to heaven from right down here. This is the dressing of the room. Let us all stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. have a few announcements uh, for today as it relates to our banquet on tonight uh, we will start at 6 30 sharp we will be in Regency ballroom number two Regency ballroom number two 6 30 p.m. sharp amen additional announcements first of all let me just take this opportunity to say uh, the light of a new day Amen. A light of a new day. Uh, I receive that. Amen. 
So the announcements for IMLA, uh, we want you to go to our website, our Facebook page. We have announcements there. And the 52nd quadrennial session of the General Conference of the Amy Zion Church, this will take place on Thursday, April the 13th. 9 a.m. is registration. Friday, April the 14th will be an evening closing. Reverend Dr. Anthony Witherspoon, the IMLA president, Mr. Joseph King Davis Jr., international pre president of CLC. The legislation development and summit meeting, the host church will be Steel Creek Amy Zion Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. The headquarter hotel will be the Drury Inn and Suites in Charlotte, North Carolina, Arrowwood. Arrow That's 8925 Red Oak Boulevard in Charlotte, North Carolina. All additional information you can find on our website. The registration for this particular meeting is $100. These cards will be passed out so you'll receive this information. Amen? Amen. Blessings. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask Reverend Nivens to pronounce the benediction, and then we're going into we're going to go into business session, executive session, um, following the pronouncing of the benediction. Thank you. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that He has done. And since we will be here all week, we'll just have a closing prayer instead of a formal benediction. Is that all right? Let us pray to God. We thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for how you have imparted into us, God. Now, Father, as we leave this moment to move forward, help us move in the light of a new day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We we ask that you stick around. Now, a, a couple of things. If you have not paid your membership, please see Dr. Myrtle Bowen for uh, the paying of the membership. Thirty-five dollars for uh, yearly membership. For those who are life members, two hundred dollars. And those who those who will become life members, two hundred dollars. And for those who have been life members, ten dollars sustaining membership. And then we encourage pastors and districts to pay memberships for their churches and districts at $100 because uh, all that you do allows our organization to be sustained. So we pray that you would, before you leave uh, the premises, that you will see Dr. Myrtle Bowen, who will be more than happy to assist in the same. Amen? I'd like to call to order the 86th session of the International Ministers and Lay Association annual meeting for business. And we will have uh, uh, three reports, four reports, and I will give the, the fourth of the uh, reports. But first we will have our treasurer's report, followed by our minutes from our secretary. She will give us some information regarding the same. And then we will have an update, the report on a membership, and then I will come with the last report. In that order, would you please come expeditiously? shared on the screen. I, I apologize. We have some technical difficulties. So since we don't have Wi-Fi, technically we can't show it on the screen.
but we can email a copy out to those who like to receive it. The International Minister and Labor Association Treasurer's Report, in February 2022, February 2023, balance brought forward $745.77 membership dues collected $4,625, offerings $3,495.28, total $8,866.05, honoraries, benevolence, and stipends, $2,275, plaques, programs, printing supplies, and registration, $1,185.47, Mailing supplies, $300. Travel, $2,179.94. Monthly maintenance fee, bank charges, $130. Virtual awards banquet, $1,911. You know the past two years our banquet has been virtual. This is the first in-person banquet we have. Website fee, $195. Total disbursements eight thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars and forty-one cents. Income eight thousand eight hundred sixty-six dollars and five cents. Total difference of balance on hand six hundred thirty-nine dollars and sixty-four cents. During this whole entire process, we've transformed our giving uh, opportunities for individuals outside of just uh, mailing it in. We can also give via PayPal, Cash App, and Zelle to directly to the minister and lay association. Once again, we do apologize for not being able to have hard copies to give to individuals directly, uh, but if there is anyone that'd like to have a copy, uh, we will be able to, I believe we can post it on our website and, and or uh, get them out to individuals. That is the treasury report. Humbly submitted, Reverend Dr. David T. Miller. Thank you. Thank you, you've heard the reading of the treasury report. What is the pleasure of this association, those persons who are card-carrying members? What is your pleasure? Yes. It's been moving properly seconded that we receive the report from the treasurer with necessary corrections, if any. Are you ready for the question? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Opposed with the same sign, the ayes have it, and it is so ordered. Thank you. Now, anyone that re requests a hard copy, Dr. Miller will, will ensure that you receive a hard copy. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask Sister Niles if you would give us an update. Mr. President, so happy to see you all after so many years of not seeing you face to face. As you know, um, this is our first vir non-virtual meeting, uh, in-person meeting for um, in the last couple of years. So we really did not have any actionable items in our minutes. Our minutes are located on our website. The website address is on the back of your programs. I-M-L-A-A-M-E Zion.org and you can see our minutes if you peruse them and have any issue with them just kindly send me an email and we can make the corrections. Amen? Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Amen. Thank you. Uh, this is the International Ministers and Lay Association Annual Membership Report for 2022. And for those of you who are preparing your membership, please complete your envelope and just drop it off and we'll make sure we have records of it. This receipt from February 16, 2022 through December 31st, 2022, as of February the 10th, 2023. Our annual membership of 87 members, uh, we received $3,049. Life membership, uh, 21, $590. Church membership, five, $500. And district, we had one, 
being uh, $100, a total of 114 with our cash or check payments for membership, totaling $4,329. For our online annual membership, we had 17 of $629. Online life membership, two of $223 and the total of 19 online registration being completed, a total of $852. That brings our total, grand total for membership for the year of 2022 to 133 members, totaling $5,091. Our report uh, does break down the, the each Episcopal district, Piedmont annual membership of six, online six annual, Eastern North Carolina, four annual and two life members, online one life member. Northeastern, we had one annual membership and online membership of one. South Atlantic, two annual membership and online membership of three. Let's give our Alabama, Florida a round of applause for annual membership of 74 members and life members of 17 and a total of online of two. Again, we had a total of 114 on our cash and check receipts and a to grand total of 133 members totaling $5,091. Respectfully submitted, Reverend Dr. Myrtle Bowen, Second Vice President, International Ministers and Lay Association. God bless you. So much you've heard the report of our membership chair, our second vice president. What is your pleasure? Okay. The moving private seconded that we receive the membership chair's report, second vice president's report, with any necessary corrections should there be any. Are you ready for the question? All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Opposes the same sign. The eyes have it, and it's so ordered. Thank you, Sister Niles. Thank you, Dr. Bowen, for a marvelous job. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing we want to do. One of our members lost all she had in the fire. The lapel pins that we have, we had for the association, they were lost in the fire. No fault to Sister Carlos Tyrants, who is a tremendous person, tremendous woman of Zion, a tremendous executive team person, and a tremendous person who represents God. And so I asked, I said to her, I would make that report because people were buying uh, membership pins, and so they were lost in the fire that is nothing that she can do about that but we thank God for her studious dedication to our association amen I had not brought us together as president of the association to pray for Miss Collis many have prayed for her and I want us as an association thank God, first of all, that she wasn't in that fire. Amen. And secondly, it's for us to show our gratitude to her for even though she lost everything, she trusted God and God is replacing things in her life. Amen. Um, now she didn't know I was going to do this. I want to be a blessing to college towns. All of you today who are able to make a sacrifice, I want to ask you to put something in your hand right now. I'm going to ask our treasurer and financial secretary to please come. And I want to ask them to direct you to come because we want to be a blessing the college town. She doesn't ask for anything. I want to say that again. She doesn't ask for anything. And if you are writing checks, please make them payable to IMLA and put in the memo section 
college tyrants. T-Y-R-A-N-C-E is our last name, college tyrants. If you're utilizing our cash app, please do so. And if you're giving cash, what we will do, once we have collected from you, then I will instruct the treasurer to write one check to her. Amen? And we will present that to her at our next setting when we get together as, a, an, as an association. Amen? In the next day, tomorrow, we'll present that to Miss Tyrants. Amen? Come on, let us pray. Father, we thank you that we may lose possessions, but we did not lose our souls. And we thank you, God, that material things can be replaced. But we're grateful that you spared our very own who was, who was able to continue to do your will. And we bless you today thank you for the gifts you will give through the hands of many that this will be a blessing for sister tyrants as she continues to labor on and reestablish her life in jesus name we pray amen would you come quickly yeah i told her If you do want to be a cash app, uh, remember it's dollar sign I-M-L-A-A-M-E Zion. And as the president said, in the memo section, put gift for Sister Tyrants. And we'll make sure the things are taken care of accordingly. I do apologize, uh, clarification, the cash app is dollar sign and then I-M-L-A-A-M-E Zion in all caps. Dollar sign, I-M-L-A-A-M-E Zion, all capital letters. And if you don't pull up, let me know, you can see me on the side or we can scan the code. Thank you. Amen, let us stand as we bless this offering. All things come with thee, O oh Lord. All things come with Thank you so very much. Family, we are happy to have with us 
senior bishop, president of the Board of Bishops, and the Board of Bishops who have taken time away from their very busy schedule to join us. I asked, I asked Bishop Proctor if he would take a moment to, in, and we invited the Board of Bishops to be with us. We are blessed as an association because Bishop Proctor is a product of, of International Ministers and Lay Association. And our, our Board of Bishops are supporters of us. And we thought in our robbery, uh, right before Bishop Proctor retires as a bishop in our church, to ask him to come. He is the president today. And we know that the change of the guard will take place on tomorrow. Uh, they will come. Now, what we've done, uh, Bishop, we asked for people if they had a question, one question, to put to place that question on the post on an index card. We've stressed one question, <laughs> and so I think there are only about three or four. If you have the time to address those questions on today, I'm going to ask. Uh, our senior bishop and our president of the board of bishops and the bishop, they would like to come and join us here. It's up to you all. If you're comfortable, that's fine. But we invite you to come and join us up here in our meeting, and we're grateful to have them here with us on today. Amen. We work in tandem, and we know it takes an entire village to raise a child. So we work as one on the umbrella of the sons and daughters of Barrick, Bishop Dennis Proctor, the president of the Board of Bishops. Amen. Thank you very kindly. You may be seated. Every time I say that, I think of the late, great Bishop Reuben Lee Speaks. Nobody had that kind of commanding voice as he did. Well, good afternoon to each of you. We're honored to be here. When I sat where you sit, I used to think all the time, boy, those bishops look tired and worn. <laughs> well, we are tired, we are worn, but we're not sad. And we're not sad because we have an opportunity to come and share with you just a word of greeting. We did not anticipate question and answer period. Uh, we would have that scheduled for earlier in a day when we could be fresh and we could take all the time that was needed. That is not our intention tonight because we simply wanted to get to see other parts of the family. My friend, the late, great A. Lewis Patterson Jr. says we are family on three levels, anthropologically, uh, eschatologically, and ecumenically. Uh, that we are the same blood, that we operate in the same community, and we are headed to the same Father's house. And so as we keep that in mind, we work together as family. And so we wanted to come and just say hello to you. But I see I have a few questions. I'm going to try to raise them uh, quickly and move out of the way. Standing is still a little challenge. Uh, for me, some of you know I was struggling with vertigo uh, after one of our meetings, and so I am uh, supposed to be sitting down quietly in a room, but, uh, you know, we had work to do. Let me hit these questions real quick. As a delegate, past and present, why do 